Grab all your friends and dance right through the night. Let's party till it hurts. Jump up and scream, my God, I'm high. So high. Welcome back to East Coast the- DNA. I'm your host, Darcy Walsh. And today we have another singer-songwriter, this time a little different. Uh, I believe, Mark, you're calling in from uh, L.A.? Yeah, uh, well, from Venice Beach, actually. Oh, okay, Venice Beach, even even better. That sounds a lot yeah. better than the the weather I'm having up here. Anyway, it's been really overcast and chilly the last little while. Oh no! Well, East Coast East Coast weather. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, for all of our viewers that are not familiar with the face, we have Mark Robillard. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There are, we do have some new uh, French viewers. I just spent a week in Moncton for their award show and their annual music week. So uh, I, you'll have to forgive me, any of the French speakers. I, I'm definitely speaking English, but I'll, I'll work on some of that in the future. So, uh, Mark, today uh, where I'm sitting here in Nagalasco, Nova Scotia, and you're down there. Uh, but when I was doing a little bit of research into who Mark is. I did see that you have East Coast roots a little. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, huge East Coast roots, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you're uh, a, a big uh, world traveler with your uh, career history there, too. So maybe if you want to go back to uh, when you started off in music, I guess, you, you usually when we have a singer-songwriter, and I guess I'm saying this a lot lately, so it's not usually but the typical answer is to go to like when you first picked up a guitar and learned how to sing and what inspired you to become a singer songwriter. But in your situation, it's a little reverse to what we have with some of our artists where you kind of were working on the other end of it, helping other artists yeah, and kind of honed your skill from that end before breaking off into singer songwriter. Yeah. I think I did kind of come at it a little bit backwards, a little bit more, uh, a different story for sure. Uh, well, when I first got into music, I um, I thought, you know, I wasn't a musician. So I thought I started getting, uh, you know, I started hanging around with musicians in Halifax and, and I got really interested in the way music was, was, you know, done and produced. And I wanted to figure out how I could be a part of it. And I knew I wasn't a musician at the time. So I was like, well, maybe I can go to school to figure out how to, you know, record, how to produce, how to kind of, you know, do it from that angle so I did and I went to school in uh just outside of Toronto um at the Recording Arts Program of Canada and and learned how to you know record and produce and then from there I I came back to Halifax and started working with bands and had my own like, like little record label and and uh you know we did that for a while and and quickly I realized that it was that was a tough road as well and and so then I started uh looking to work at studios. And so I worked at a studio in Halifax um, with Steve Outhead actually. And then I moved to Toronto and started working at some studios there in Toronto. I think I worked at two or three studios in Toronto. And then after that, I quickly realized that I, um, I wanted to be more creative in that. And I wanted to be the person that was doing the recording. So I started writing my own music and started playing around with, you know, the piano and the guitar and my own voice and, And um, I ran into, I made friends with this guy that um, owns owned a company with his friend called Grayson Matthews. And it was a, uh, uh, we call them a music house and Mm -hmm. they write music for mostly TV commercials and, and uh, TV shows and films and stuff like that. But at the, at the time they were doing mostly TV commercials and pretty successful at it. And I, um, I started working for them as like a, you know, kind of like a, assistant and I started writing uh, my own stuff and for pitching for jobs on the side you know I remember actually it was pretty funny uh, thinking back I had like this little desk it was like this big and I had one speaker (laughs) and I was writing demos and I remember when I I landed my first demo for um, for a pitch it was for like a um, a racehorsing uh, woodbine it's for woodbine and uh and I got it and uh, it was, I was pretty excited and, and um, yeah, it kind of grew from there. And I really learned how to, how to write and produce music when I was there. It was kind of like the repetition of that really, you know, 
yeah. is a great thing to learn how to produce. You, you got to just keep doing it over and over and over. You start to build muscles and your ears start to get tuned into what works and what doesn't work. And, and uh, yeah, so then um, eventually I, I uh, became a freelancer and um, went out on my own and started working for other companies. And, and all along during this kind of process, I, I was, you know, doing my own music as well. I was mm -hmm. writing my own sort of original art artist music. And, but I, uh, I was, a lot of my time was spent, you know, um, writing music for TV commercials and stuff like that. So it was, a that part of it was a grind a little bit. So it kind of took away a little bit from the, you know, the artist side. Um, sure. but, um, but yes. And, um, and then I've also got, I also did a bunch of stuff for, um, music licensing I, I signed this deal with uh, mtv and sony uh when i first moved to la um for some songs and really got me into the the, the world of music licensing and really mm -hmm. helped me out in that in that respect and it kind of snowballed from there and so i've had some good success with that and and sort of that leads me where i am now and um i'm kind of moving away from writing music for tv commercials because mm -hmm. you know uh it served me well, but I'm kind of excited about just kind of putting all my uh, eggs into basket A, if you will, you know, and that's with you. That's kind of another thing that's a little bit reversed to a lot of people yeah, that I've talked definitely. to too, is that you like everyone that I know that's out there, like just pushing it with their live shows and trying to get digital releases out, if not a full album, they're all thinking like, oh, if I could just get some sync licensing for a few and, bucks on the side to keep this train rolling. I know but you've it's, done the opposite, I know. which it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's very commendable. Like I'm sure many people would love to learn some tricks from you. It's so weird. You're absolutely right. And I was talking to my, uh, like, a um, a colleague the other day about, um, social media and marketing, because that's kind of, I'm just starting to kind of dip my foot into that uh, pool. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's a complex, um, machine if you will and she was telling me about this same thing and, and she was saying well there's really no money in streaming and there's no money in this she said all the money is in 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 licensing and stuff like this and i'm like well i've already done that like how do i get it into it's like how do i go backwards so it you're right it's it's i've kind of come from a different uh angle for sure but you know everyone's got their own their own path and their own journey so absolutely how do you find I mean, this is kind of a unique question to be given your experience then. Uh, you did mention that you had a like an indie label in the Halifax area back in the day. And yeah. now you're essentially like with the part that you're trying to break back into because of the path that it's required, you're kind of essentially launching that part of again in the yeah. digital era. Yeah. So like, do you note any comparisons back to the old school you know the only comparison back to the old school really is i guess you know effort yeah <laughs> that's really all there is i mean nowadays you know you look at indie musicians and it's you got to wear about ten thousand different hats and it's mm -hmm. really it's really i mean every every field of employment has its difficulty i'm sure but um when you're an indie musician it, it's definitely you know marketing in itself it's like, like the past two or three weeks i just like i said dipped my foot into the marketing thing and it's like wow it's like a whole other like board of directors that should be on this in my own marketing team you yeah. know it's like it's crazy how much uh, effort it takes and how much time it takes and and really you know as musicians we just want to or songwriters you know we want to write songs that's kind of mm -hmm. but you have to i guess you have to put you know you have to do everything really. That's kind of, that's kind of what it boils down to. Yeah. It is unfortunate, especially for people just starting off that there's so many things required of one person to self promote versus getting somebody make up a cool poster and a few friends go around and poster the city so that you can have a good yeah. gig. Like we used to do posters back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have, I have this show, so I, I'm helping out artists a little bit, but uh, absolutely. yeah. Thanks there's... for having me on, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I am curious too, before we get away from the topic, what was the name of that record label? Cause I'm a little bit of a music nerd. I might uh, oh, recognize. It was, it was called drop records. And we had like, we had basically two artists on there. There was one band called PF station. Yeah. Yeah. And one band called Dr. Uh, 
Dr. Feel Good. Dr. No, Dr. PF Station would be a lot of the same guys that were Jimmy Swift band. And... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm good friends yeah. with Craig Mercer and all those guys. Yeah, and... Craig's still very active in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's he was teaching for a while and mm -hmm. he's still doing that, I think. And yeah, he's he's a he's a great guy in the music scene for sure. He knows so many people. He's a great guy. And speaking of uh, Craig Mercer and teaching, yeah. Back when you had the decision to move to now, this might be a little. I find this different because I have a lot of different ages for the guests that are on the show, and we pretty yeah. much have similar conversations. But every once in a while, the age thing kind of falls in. Yeah. So, how long have you been out of Nova Scotia? Oh, um, jeez. Well, I moved to Toronto. Uh, so I've been in, I've been in I've been in LA now for 13 years, which yeah. is crazy. And then before that, I was in Toronto or I was in London, England for three years. And then before that, I was in Toronto for, you know, for for five or six years. So I've been out of Halifax for a while now. But, you know, my, my family still lives there and I still have a lot of close friends there. So I, I usually try and get back once or twice a year. And, and so I still have my roots there, you know. And so how about... Uh you return into Nova Scotia. We're going to see some performances come up. Here. Oh, I, I would love to. I'm like I said, this is kind of like, I'm, I'm just kind of starting on this, this mini journey back into being like putting all my apples into one basket. So hopefully, yeah. And you know, um, my friend, uh, Tim Hardy, you know, Tim Hardy. Yes. Um, so he's kind of helping me with, with all my stuff back home like that. And so, I could see that definitely happening um, in the near future for sure. And so your original reason for moving away w for school, yeah. nowadays we would have somebody like Craig here in Nova Scotia that you could Absolutely, go to. But yeah. back then that like, I, it is hard to explain to some people, like if they're in their twenties or maybe some people even in their thirties, like even myself, when I was of the age to stop schooling and start earning some money to pay the yeah. bills. Yeah. I would have loved to have stuck with something music industry related. I used to work retail record stores and I had a few small businesses selling merchandise, Okay, but they're just, we didn't have the options as, as much as the music was really cool back then. And it was really active and vibrant. Like there was a lot of stuff happening in the, like all the way through the nineties, early two thousands, but like there was no schooling on the East coast. If you wanted to yeah. do something like that. Yeah, no, and now there is. Now they have great programs there for sure. Yeah. yeah. And That's actually, a quick little plug for CB Mike. They have some courses coming up. How you had mentioned about the marketing and the online stuff. They have some courses coming up for uh, members. Uh, oh. It's it's sponsored through uh, Department of Labor partially in Nova Scotia. So for Nova Scotian musicians out there that are struggling to figure out how am I supposed to do all these things, there's courses to teach you how to do those things and best practices. Yeah, totally. I, and there's so much great knowledge out there to, to learn. And uh, like, you're just when you start to do that stuff, you just realize uh, how much it takes a village, you know, how much it takes everybody kind of coming together to try yeah. and, you know, push you forward. And, it, and it gives you that sense of community for sure, which is which is nice, you know, because everyone really just wants everyone to succeed in the end, you know. And your catalog of singles, was very familiar when I went through it. Uh, a couple okay. of them I knew right off, uh, oh, especially cool. okay. newer ones. But uh, as I went deeper and went back a little bit, they still sounded very familiar. And I'm thinking that can probably be at least, well, partially I run a music podcast. So, I mean, I'm sure I've come across you a couple of times, but okay. on top of that, I'm just wondering if it's the sync licensing or radio play. Like it, it, it must've been- sync yeah it, there was a little bit of radio airplay but i never really like i think with the artist stuff I, that's why i didn't i didn't do that as much so the radio or the um the sync placements definitely was my the bulk of that push and that's probably like almost all of my songs i think have really gotten some of them you know have, have not but a lot of them have really gotten some great placements over the years and sort of and that's where a lot of my um you know listeners from spotify come from stuff like that so it's definitely been sync has been huge for me in my, you know, um, moving forward. So I hope your, your Wikipedia page is out of date. 
Oh, is it? Yeah, I I think the last uh, reference it has in there is the sync licensing for a craft commercial that you did. Uh, Okay. Oh, yeah, I know that song. Yeah. So Heart and Soul, was that synced somewhere? Yeah, that was definitely synced. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because that that one I found, like, I I had it on in the background while I was doing some stuff around the house, just because a playlist of people I'll be interviewing. And when it came on, I was singing along because I was doing something like, wait a minute. I'm interviewing this guy. How do I know the words? So I didn't... That's awesome. Or maybe I think I've I've done it a couple of times recently on social media, trying to push it back out. You know, trying to do sure. old stuff, trying to get you know people interested in my career again. So it might have been through there, but yeah, it's definitely been licensed before. And so, where do you get your inspiration from for your sound? Because although your your sync that we keep talking about, you had it licensed to many different properties like TV shows and commercials, et cetera. And we could go through the list, but we'd probably need another half hour just to go through okay. the whole history of it. But your sound, even though you've been doing the singer songwriter thing for quite a while now, it kind of predates some of the popular music that's out right now that sounds exactly like it would fit right into the playlists of all the modern like pop, folk kind of artists that you'd hear on like toronto's edge radio station or like something that you would hear oh, on some good. of the commercial yeah. radios that'd be nice <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know this is one of the things i think i probably um want to try and refine a little bit maybe or try and kind of narrow a little bit because i guess my background was doing you know so much music for so many different genres and so many different styles I kind of just got comfortable like one day writing an orchestral piece the next day writing a, a hip-hop song next day writing a country song so I think maybe my own stuff kind of you know shifted around in so many different areas that I, I kind of like and it, it wasn't like I was afraid of that you know and mm-hmm. I kind of like all different styles but I'm hoping that it has a common a common thread of my you know my of myself through it and um but i think um i did i've done some stuff that i've been more like contemporary but with like kind of a singer songwriter edge and then i've done some stuff that it's been more like indie alternative rock kind of thing and then i've done some stuff that's a bit more acoustic kind of thing and yeah i guess this is uh it's hard to pin down probably and i i should definitely think about maybe um having a clear image of what that looks like moving forward i think that might help me as well have any of them ever been picked up by anybody that wanted to do a remix because i found too that it's so clean like obviously where you have a production background you came into like you don't have old demos that sound like you recorded them in a closet they oh no i have a whole bunch of demos that i can send you them (laughs) (laughs) i was looking through my hard drive the other day and like i i have written so much music for like you know demos for tv commercials and Mm -hmm. stuff like that it's crazy like i'm just like wow this is no wonder i haven't been writing as many songs i'm like writing too many demos but yeah uh i would love um for somebody to do remixes of my stuff actually just a i was just in mexico for my friend's birthday and uh a friend of ours is a dj and i just reached out to him and asked him if he knew anybody that did remixes because sometimes that's a great way to kind of break old songs or you know break new songs or create collaborations and yeah so there's actually a prince edward island artist that may or may not watch this i know that they remixed a couple songs from guests that were on this show too so uh lee if you're watching my show thank you and uh reach out to this guy yes lee let's do it (laughs) so um what's your latest single that you have out now making the round so again, this is sort of this song that I just released is is definitely even different than all my other stuff. It's kind of like I don't even know how how would you even explain it? It's kind of like a it's kind of a pop song with kind of more of like a like a kind of a drunken band kind of vibe, you know? Sure, like that's a good there. description. It's a little yeah. bit more unique than I would have used, but yeah, that's, that's even kind better. of what I had in mind. You know, I yeah. kind of had in mind like a live band playing in front of like a bunch of people having fun. You know, that's how I kind of pictured it in my yeah. mind. So. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like that and it's about you know um, every time I hear myself say about by the way I I hear myself because all my friends here make fun of my Canadian accent (laughs) and about is the one of the words that they use (laughs) Um, so yeah uh, um, it's about you know sometimes how we have to kind of you know let the day go and and just like 
how do I explain this? Like, go out and have a little fun, you know, laugh with some friends. And, you know, sometimes that's what we need to shake it off a little bit. You know, uh, it's just like, and it doesn't necessarily need, need to be that party or anything like that, but it could be like, you know, going out with a, some friends for, you know, a run or a bike ride or, you know, or, or, or walk on the beach or laugh a little bit or have a coffee. You know, it's just about that, that need to sometimes really let go and, and just let loose a little bit, you know? And, and for me, um, I know I'm, we're all humans going through the same experiences. And, and for me, that's sometimes, you know, you just need a little bit of that to kind of let yourself breathe again, you know? So that's what this song is, is kind of about. Awesome. And yeah. where would you send people to find you online to keep track of what's coming up? Cause it sounds like there might be some new things coming from yeah. you that people want to yeah. keep track of. Yeah. I'm really excited. Actually, I'm just, I'm finishing up this new song right now called ordinary love and I'm really excited about it. It's kind of like a, again, it's probably not refined, but it's kind of like a, like a, like a reggae kind of vibe with like, kind of like a Jack Johnson kind of reggae vibe. And, um, they can they can uh, reach out. To, I'm if you search my name anywhere on the internet, Mark Robillard, M A R C, R O B I L L A R D. You'll find me under my website, markrobillard.com, or YouTube. I have my YouTube station. Or now I'm I'm trying to uh, to go viral on TikTok because that's where the the new growth market is. I'm trying mm-hmm. to reach new fans there. So I'm on TikTok or Instagram or you know. Anywhere on the internet, you can probably find me. And we'll throw a couple links down the bottom, but for anyone watching, it is that easy. I typed yeah. his name in and everything came up right away. My, I can send you my link tree as well that has awesome. all the all the stuff on it. So yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So and I'm 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 not feeling that that well today because I got COVID just this morning. So I'm a little haggard. So I apologize if I'm if I'm not too with it right now. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little uh slow on the updates for yeah, a week or two. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I'm going to take a couple of days off, I guess. And so for people that are new to you, what song would you like to feature here at the end of the episode, uh, just to give them exposure to who you are and then they can go follow your website. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll preemptively say this, that I'm going to say, let's push the new single uh, till it hurts for sure. Cause it's the new one, but you know, if you have the time, take a look at some of the other stuff I have. Cause my, um, my stuff is kind of mixed across the board. So one song might be completely not up your alley. Well, another song might be, you know, for sure. So yeah, shop yeah. around a little bit. There's a little yeah, bit of variety in there. Yeah. So, and hopefully we get you snaggled into our algorithm here with all the East coast artists so that we start pushing you a little bit to oh, some man. of the people here too. That would be helpful. I would love to be in that algorithm for sure. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll, uh, end here with your single and in the future please uh, feel free to reach out when you're ready to start releasing some new songs or if you have any tour dates you want to promote i'll be more than happy to pass them along or maybe even have you back on for another future episode thank you so much i really appreciate it and uh yeah thanks so much for anybody listening and darcy thanks for your time man great thanks again all right take care shake off your cares wave them goodbye goodbye Grab all your friends and dance right through the night Let's party till it hurts Jump up and scream, my God, I'm high So high Cause tonight you got a feeling only one thing on your mind I wanna party till it hurts You've been pulling your hair all out, oof, ouch And you've been fighting your kick and shout, Ugh, wow Sometimes you gotta let go, let go Unwind and go with the flow Don't worry about nothing no more, no more Shake off your cares, wave them Feeling only one thing on your mind 
Your car broke down and your dog got fleas. Ah, jeez. There ain't no shame if you need a breather. See, 'cause sometimes you gotta live a little, take a break, just laugh and let go. Let go. Let go. Let's go. Unwind a bit and take a sip, on top your shit and go with the flow. Don't worry about nothing, no more, no more. Shake off your cares, wave them goodbye. Grab all your friends and dance right through the night. Let's party till it hurts. Jump up and scream, my God, I'm high. So high. 'Cause tonight you got a feeling, only one thing on your mind. I wanna party till it hurts. Everybody come along. Take off your cares, wave them goodbye. Goodbye. Grab all your friends and dance right through the night. Let's party till it hurts. Jump up and scream, my God.